Welcome to Guns Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in today. I want to bring you this video. It's a review and a little bit of a discussion about bows for survival, prepping, crap hits the fan, that sort of thing. I did a video back some time ago. It's probably been a year or two now. And I kind of highlighted this bow here that I had picked up at a local gun shop uh, that they had had, just a used one that they took on trade or something. And um, since that time, when I bought this and I had painted it camouflage and done a few modifications to it, i uh, been shooting it, the limbs actually delaminated. So this bow, even though it looks great, I hate it, but it's basically useless. Good thing I didn't pay a whole lot for it. So that's kind of the whole reason that I even had this video that I'm doing today was because I was researching for another bow. I'd had a couple, my kids got a couple, but I really wanted another one kind of dedicated for prepping and survival. There's nothing wrong with this style but it is a, lot, a little more fragile than some of the actually ones designated for survival so because it's made of wood and things like that so you have to be a little more careful with moisture and water and so forth but a lot of the ones and the one i bought after much research the when i started researching decided hey i'm gonna get a dedicated survival bow um and more so than one kind of dedicated to fun archery i call it this one's kind of you're going to shoot it some, enjoy it, but for the most part, it is not designed for uh, recreational archery. Could it be used for that? Yes, um, but that's not what it's really designed for. It's more designed for survival because of the materials it's made of and things like that. So that was the reason I did a lot of research, and the reason, if you watch my channel, you know I don't do a lot of negative reviews. And part of that is is because I do a lot of extensive research and it keeps you guys from having to do a lot of research because I've already researched a lot. Do I get to review each, every survival bow out there and then make my decision? No, I don't do that some because a lot of this gear I have to pay for. So I have to be careful where I prioritize my money. So I look at YouTube reviews. I look at Amazon reviews. I go in forums. I read up, kind of, you know, play out the pros and cons of each before making my decision if there's multiple choice in that certain particular style of product I'm looking at. So after much research, I decided on the Spectra 2 from uh, Expectra Incorporated. So it's a Spectra 2 bow, and then the company, company is Expectra Incorporated. Um, so when I decided I was going to purchase this one based on price point and the materials it was made of and weight and what came in the package and all those things... I reached out to the company and I told them that I was a YouTube reviewer and I was looking at purchasing their item and if they had any programs for YouTube reviewers and they said yes, they do, and they'd be glad to send me out one for review and testing. So that's what I did. So I've had it a few days now, I guess about a week now, and I've been shooting it and enjoying it. Um, I had some video of me shooting it, but um, I've since accidentally erased it. So the weather's kind of nasty here today and I'm not gonna go back out and reshoot that. There's plenty of videos around with people shooting this bow. Um, so why did I pick this bow is because of the price point and the materials and things and the reviews it gets because it uh, is less than $100 for the entire package, which is very attractive when people are on budgets. So in the package, you're going to get the instruction booklet, a nice uh, case. It's a nylon, uh, like a, it's almost like a webbing, a nylon webbing that is wide. Uh, probably, that's probably a four inch webbing, I guess, uh, a three inch webbing, and they've went and sewn it into making a nice, it doubles as a case and a quiver. So you can, and it comes with three carbon fiber uh, bow, I mean arrows, and then it comes with the bow itself. So you get the limbs, you get the riser, and then you also get a string. The string that comes with this one is a, it's actually a Stone Mountain Bow Strings is the company. And so this is not like some, you know, weird uh, string that they made or something like that out of paracord or whatever. This is a professional bow string. Um, so it's 48 inches in length uh, as far as the, the string is for a 48 inch bow. And this is a 10 strand. So, um, Already, I've made a few modifications to this bow 
once I got it, started shooting it, and started making a few modifications. Is that to say that modifications are mandatory or necessary to enjoy or use this bow? No, there's that's not necessary. However, I've never owned a bow that I didn't do modifications to, just like this one. I put a nice leather handle here, uh, you know, grip area. I put Velcro on the shelf to help silence the arrow when it comes uh, when you're pulling and releasing the arrow across the shelf. I've painted this one camouflage. So I, I basically, any bow, I, I'll probably modify every bow that I've ever owned or shot uh, by adding a little something to it or something like that. This one's no different. So just keep that in mind when you see some of this and I'm gonna go over some of the uh, modifications. One of the modifications I did, I just, it comes in kind of a black color and then the limbs themselves are kind of a olive green color. They're not OD green, but it's kind of an olive green color, light green. And um, so I've just kind of hit them with some uh, camouflage paint. The riser, this is called the riser. That's the center part that you hold on to. The riser is made of a chunk of fiberglass. Very durable, very weatherproof. This thing is bomb proof. That's why I picked it. It's very simplistic in its design. It has very few moving parts as far as anything. You can put it together and uh, unassemble and assemble it with no tools required, anything like that. This one's 55, or I'm sorry, this one's 45 pounds that they sent me. I don't even need a bow stringer or anything to put it together. All right, so on the riser, I have added this paracord wrap here. It just makes it a little more grippy for my hand because this is kind of a rectangular, squarish style riser. Um, I decided to make it more rounded with the grip paracord. It also, multi-purpose, I have paracord in an emergency because once this paracord's removed, it still functions fine. Um, I've added, it comes with, let's see if I can find it. I had it laying up here, what did I do with it? Um, it comes with this uh, style riff, uh, rest, and I've since taken this off, and I always like these flipper rests. Matter of fact, this flipper rest was on that other bow that I showed you, and I removed it and added it to here. You could uh, do a, a, you know, any kind you want. If you want to use the factory one that, that comes with it, that's fine. I prefer this style. I just got used to it and I like it and they're cheap. They're like six bucks for this thing, including shipping. So they're not a whole lot. The Bear Weather Rest is another good one if you wanted to use that. I've also added Velcro here that, and I'll show you here in a second why I do that, is to make it quieter. And I'll show you the difference between not having it and having it here in just a second. I also added two pieces of Velcro under this area here. And I'll show you why here in a second. This is where the limbs go. And now one thing you want to do with this bow when you get it, because the limbs are not marked. So to keep this bow from breaking, because what happens is if you don't put these limbs on exactly the same every time, you run the risk of causing them to stress and break. Because you're flexing them one way and they kind of develop what I call a little bit of a set. In other words, the material's relaxed a little bit. Now you don't want a full, what's called a full set bow where the, the limbs are just out of whack then at that point. But you do want the, the especially fiberglass or whatever, you want it to kind of go in one direction. Um, and kind of get used to that direction. Well, if you then turn it around and flip it and put the top one on the bottom or flip it around the other side, something like that, then you can cause problems. Another problem that people have with all bows, unfortunately, is they dry fire them. They'll pull the string back and release it without actually having... Now, you can pull it back and then ride it forward with your hand. That's fine, but just pulling it back, boom, and, you know, and letting it go, that will cause you to break limbs. Don't do that. And it even says that in their instruction booklet. Um, also, uh, briefly, let me tell you, the instruction booklet is very nice. It tells you about the bow. tells you a little bit about, um, you know, how to do things, what not to do, how to string it. It also gives you some helpful tips and tricks and tips about hunting with a bow and bow hunting in general, which is nice. And it even talks about, uh, you know, stalking or, you know, watching your game, hunting small game, birds, things like that. So that's all in this little pamphlet here um, from the company itself. All right. So the riser is, like I said, the, the entire package weighs just over two pounds uh, as far as the bow and everything. So it's very lightweight. The It's very compact. It, it breaks down to, you know, very small package in size, which I like. Um, it's not big and bulky and so forth. So it, it's very well suited for a survival bow. All right. So 
What you want to do is I've marked it. So this, if you see, this limb has T, which and to me, you can mark it however you want. To me, that represents top. So you would take and slide this in here. And the reason, I'll tell you here in a second, I put that Velcro in here. If you look, there it is there is when this bow is strung, it actually makes it quieter. These limbs all have harmonics, and there's ways of helping quiet that down by doing small little things. Uh, and a lot of the mainstream bows, whether it be long bow or recurve, there's certain limb uh, silencers, things like that. So I put this in here to silence it, and it actually works very well. So that's a little helpful tip to you. So just take a little piece of Velcro that has the sticky back and trim it to size to fit in here. So the other one's marked B, which means bottom. Now, what also this thing needs to face, these limbs need to face a certain way. So I know when it's facing towards me as I'm holding the bow this way, that the letters need to be facing me, the top needs to be at the top, and the B, the bottom, needs to be at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and stick this one in here. And what it is, they're going to slide up and they're going to lock into uh, or bump into these little grooves here, these little pins that they're sticking up. All right, so I'm going to, I'm not going to do this, it's going to be hard to do it on camera, but I'm going to string the bow. All right, so let me talk about the string just for a minute. If you look, this is a professional string. And I've added a few things. I've added, added what's called string silencers, and also I've added finger savers, which are here, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Uh, but I want to show you that real quick without it on the bow. So I'm going to string this thing up, and then I will show you guys a little bit about all the features of it. Keep in mind, you got to be careful. You got, there's some videos out there, and I'm not going to go over it. You'll have to locate them. Um, but there's some videos out there how to string a bow, and you can use the uh, what's called the step through method. Uh, this one strings very easy, even though it's 55 pounds. I can do it without a bow stringer because the limbs are short. The longer the bow, the harder it is to do it without a uh, a stringer um, to be safe about it. All right, so. This video is going to be a little long, and I apologize, but there's a little bit to go over here. All right, so if you look, then you've got these string, these finger savers. I highly recommend these. Um, I like shooting with them anyway. Some people use finger tabs, things like that. The reason I want this on my survival bow, if I lose that finger tab or a glove, I don't have to worry about it. It's already on my... It's on my bow, so it's there, right? So I don't have to worry about it. So this makes it easier to draw and release. And if you listen got a little bit of twang but not a whole lot and then it also I've got these here these are called bow jacks you could use any kind you can make some out of what's called puff balls things like that so one of the improvements they did on this particular bow these end pieces here that your string rides into Back when they first started doing this, they had the raw fiberglass and they just cut notches in it. They've since added these, which this is, if you're familiar with a crossbow, these right here are the same or very similar to the ones you would see on crossbows on the end. So it's much more commercialized looking and it actually fits in well and you don't have to worry about it. So I think that's a great improvement. So this company's actually made small improvements over the time. They are made in the USA. It's got a little sticker here that says that made in the USA. It's got their website on it. But um, this bow shoots really good. The arrows, you know, they're they're fine. Um, they're not the uh, you know twenty dollar a piece or high dollar arrows. They do come with field points that are removable, so you can unscrew these. You could put broadheads on them, so forth. So if you just want three arrows to get started. They're going to come with the kit. Uh, you can buy this even cheaper. Let's say you already have some archery, um, and that's probably what I had done if uh, I was purchasing, because I, I have quite a bit of an archery, uh, you know, collection as far as items. And I would, you can order it just the bow and case itself, no uh, arrows. So if and it's cheaper. So if you want to do that, I think there's like ten dollars difference for the three arrows. But they send it as a package just to kind of show what it would look like, and. Um, so that's what I have. But guys, this thing is basically bomb proof. And it, they come in different pull weights. You've got, I think, 35, 45, and 55 
are the weights that they uh, do. The other thing you want to make sure of, and I'm waiting to kind of get confirmation from the company right now on brace height. Brace height is the distance between the riser and the string here and here. And I'm waiting to see what the ideal um, riser height is. And you make that riser brace height adjustment by twisting your string before you put it on to make it longer or shorter distance between the brace heights. Uh, and there's some videos about brace height. So make sure you got the correct brace height. And like I said, I'm waiting for confirmation what the ideal. I've kind of looked around on some websites and some forums where they had mentioned where the what brace height they were using. So I'm just kind of waiting for confirmation from the company. And if I get that information, I'll either annotate it or stick it in the section below. Um, but if you're looking for a budget survival bow, man, this thing is awesome. I, I mean, I just I really like it. It's four foot in length when assembled. It's very easy to stalk with because it's not real long. You can get through thick brush, you know, things like that without it just being super long. It's very compact. It shoots a little different um, because it's, you know, most people that are used to shooting longbows or recurves, they're a little longer and they just shoot different than this. Um, the pull is not going to be as long. So some people, that's going to be a little bit of getting used to. But again, guys, I'm not using this for hobby archery. Uh, I'm using it for a specific, it's a tool. So this bow, if I had to put a um, kind of what I think it kind of fits into, think of it as the Glock or the AK-47 of bows. It's, it's bulletproof, it works, it functions, it's easy to assemble. I look at it as the Glock of bows, to be honest with you. It's not pretty, but it's a functional tool. It's very blocky like the Glock. It, uh, with the Glock, you only need a punch to take it apart and put it together. This, you don't need any tools um, to put it, you know, take it apart, put it together, any of that. So in my opinion, this is the Glock of survival bows. Very simplistic, very durable, but it serves its purpose very well and does what it's supposed to um, every time. So that's just hard to beat, really, guys. Um, you know, the other ones that are out there, again, I can't speak for direct comparison. I just know based on price points that they're quite a bit more expensive. Some of them are double the price of this one or more. Um, to me, that's just a little more than I want to spend in something that I'm not going to use as a hobby uh, archery style bow. So, you know, if I'm going to spend that kind of money, I'm going to get me a little nicer long bow or something to enjoy the hobby more. Not to pack in a pack and stick in there. Now, if the performance was that big a difference, and I've seen people do direct comparisons between this bow and other survival bows, and this one ranks right up there with them. So, after even not even having the others, I can promise you, based on price point, design, functionality, and everything, this still would probably be my choice, to be honest with you, even if I had the others to compare to. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I hate the video is a little long, but like I said, I wanted to kind of go over everything. I want to thank the folks over at Spectra Incorporated for sending this bow out for us to review. And I may try reshooting re some of that shooting video uh, again or get my kid to help me with that. Um, but I accidentally deleted some of the shooting video that I had already uh, done, so I apologize, guys. But like I said, it's just me shooting a bow, so it, it's not nothing to really, you know, I want to do more of the tabletop and kind of explanation. But I think everybody should have a bow in their kit. I mean, I think it's functional, it, it does its purpose, it can take anything from birds, squirrels, ducks, geese, I mean, you name it, uh, up to bear if you've got, bear's a little tough with this one, I don't want to tell somebody to go out here and, you know, use it to shoot bear with, because uh, you really need a little more stronger poundage, but definitely deer, um, dangerous game, and I consider bear a dangerous game, you got to be a little more careful with, so I don't want to, you know, kind of put some misinformation out there, but definitely with um, the... Um, the deer and things like that this is definitely a bow that's capable of handling that and doing very well uh in that role um you know you could actually probably rig up some type of fishing setup for this and use it for bow fishing if you wanted and so forth but i definitely am a firm believer in having a bow and like i said you don't have to be a perfect archer but you definitely need to learn the skill a little bit um one of the things i will tell you real quick uh and I, before i forget the reason i added this velcro here and i'll show you before the velcro hear that after the velcro you don't hear it and that's why i put the velcro there uh because if not you can hear that thing pull back and, of course, the release. With it with Velcro on it now, 
and that's just two that's just sticky sided velcro that i put on um and it, it's now real smooth and slick and uh, doesn't make any noise so anyway guys appreciate you tuning in if you like our videos give us the thumbs up it's always appreciative get you a bow look check out these guys i think they're awesome I think you'll be very impressed, and um, it's a good item to put in your survival kit. Appreciate you tuning in. As always, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll bring you another video shortly. Have a great day, guys.